in all of these papers, we were looking at ETV versus shunt in these infants. Um, there are pros and cons to both of these procedures. Um, and what you can see is although at one year, the failure-free survival for a shunt is better than that of ETV, as you get out into five or 10 years, the children that have had success with the ETV then have a similar or potentially even a better long-term success with that. But at least in infancy, we still see that shunting has an overall initial um, better chance of, of uh, success in that first year. And this next area that they're looking at in figure four, um, they talk about the hazard ratio for ETV failure compared to shunt failure. And what this is, is looking at a hazard ratio looks at what is the risk of, of a failure of one group versus another. And so this little dividing line here at one, if you have a hazard ratio of one, an ETV has a higher chance of success or a lower failure risk. And if we're looking at a hazard ratio in this area above one, that shows that the shunt has a higher success rate. So you can see in those first three to six months, a shunt has a better success, but then those lines start to drop off. And these were the dotted line. If you look in the, um, in the description for that figure, the dotted line is for all patients and then the solid line adjust for propensity and so equalizes the two sets of, of patients. Um, but it's important as you're going through all of your articles, just look into the statistics, think about what statistics they're using and do those make sense and really um, look at what questions they're asking and what statistics they're using to analyze those results. When they get a little further into this paper, they go on to talk more about complications with shunts, um, complications with endoscopic treatment. And I know we've touched on those in the last couple of, of lectures. Um, and some of the long-term clinical outcomes, as I just mentioned from figure four, um, but then kind of looking into the last few paragraphs, they're talking about controversies and uncertainties. Um, it's still a topic of debate on what the best treatment is for hydrocephalus in infants. There's shunt versus endoscopy. Um, in infants under the age of one, there has been um, data that shows that adding choroid plexus cauterization to those uh, to that procedure does improve the success rate um, for ETV. Um, and if you look, um, there's a couple of uh, different apps that'll have that for you. I'm trying to find it on my phone. Um, but uh, there's an ETV success score that you can look at that goes through the risk of that contribute to ETV failure. Um, shunts are sort of the gold standard for treatment, um, but they have their own set of complications. And especially in certain areas, uh, it the risk of shunts can outweigh um, 
outweigh the potential downsides of endoscopy. Um, and that's some of what we'll talk about in the next paper when you're looking at a, a resource poor area like Uganda, there are definitely some pros to endoscopy as opposed to having hardware that can have mechanical failures. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.